Hey nerds, Gleemax here. Today we're looking at the top 5 mono green commanders, looking at what they do as well as the decks that they lead. As always, this list is my personal opinion. Let's get started. An honorable mention goes out to Ayula, Queen Among Bears. As a fan of Loading Ready Run's Friday Nights, the prospect of a Bear Force 1 bear themed commander deck was one of the reasons I started following LRR. You should as well, as they have great content. Ayula is the queen of a tribe pretty well known for having awful creatures. Bears are 2-2s two for 2 mana. Ayula supports a drive by allowing your grizzly bears to get bigger with 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters and fight things. She does everything a bear deck wants. I'm a fan of terrible things, and a bear commander deck is definitely a terrible thing. Gargos, Vicious Watcher. Gargos is an 8-7 with Vigilance for a 3 green green green. He has hybrid spells you cast cost 4 less to cast. Whenever a creature you control becomes a target of a spell, Gargos fights up to one target creature you don't control. So after 2019, Wizards decided to cut a good 2 mana from each creature and add extra effects to it, because fire. Gargos is a result of this. With stats way too high for the CMC, a tribal discount, and a willingness to fight anyone who touches its friends, Gargos is the premier mono green Hydra commander. For rules clarification, you can play Miscutter Hydra for a single green mana, and with Gargos's 4 mana discount, it will come in with 4 plus 1 plus 1 counters. In the tribal variant, Gargos coming down means the turn after is nothing but big, dumb Hydras being put on the table for very little mana. For instance, for 2 green, you get to play a 4-5 Voracious Hydra that can fight a thing, or become an 8-9. For 2 green, you get a 7-7 seven, seven Hydra Broodmaster. For 2 green, you get a 7-7 seven, seven Phyrexian Hydra. You get an unbelievable discount with Gargos. With cards like Genesis Hydra, the 4 mana discount is even more effective, and Lifeblood Hydra can refill your hand. And if they try to target anything with a removal spell, Gargos can fight one of their creatures, and him being an 8-7 will probably destroy it. Gargos is a very powerful commander, but it's very feast or famine. Either your opponents can deal with it, slow it down, and repeatedly kill it, or they can't, and it takes over the game. Gargos is number 5 for me, as I personally don't like the playstyle, albeit I will admit that it's incredibly powerful. At number 4 we have Titania, Protector of Argoth. Titania is a 5-3 three, for 3 green green. When Titania enters the battlefield, return target land from your graveyard to the battlefield. Whenever a land you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, create a 5-3 green elemental creature token. This commander synergizes with destroying your own lands and regrowing them to make big token beaters. Too bad she can't have Armageddon, that would be amazing. The plan with Titania is twofold, play lands and sacrifice lands. Playing lands in green is easy. Standard ramp spells, rampant growth and cultivate allow you to power out Titania, and you get to run a landfall package as well, with Tireless Tracker, Rampaging Baylots, and Avenger of Sendikar being fantastic mono green options. Sacrificing lands is harder than you think, with Zirin Orb being possibly the best option. At zero mana, zero to activate, and instant speed, it's everything we want. Harrow lets you sacrifice lands to get more lands, and Spring Bloom Druid is Harrow staple to a 1 1 body. You play all the fetch lands you can in mono green, as each comes out with a 5 3 when Titania is out as well. The big daddy land sacrifice spell is Scape Shift, which is a game winner in this deck with some setup. Getting your lands back after you've sacrificed them is important. Life from the Lone can net you three at a time and has dredge for recursion, while Crucible of Worlds and Raninath Excavator both let you play lands that you sacrifice. Titania lands herself to a land sacrificing build, often making multiple 3-3s three a turn and beating down your opponents. Titania is a solid number four. At number three, we have Yisun, Wanderer Bard. Isan is a 2-3 human rogue for Tuna Green. You may pay Tuna Green and tap him, put a verse counter on Isan, and search your library for a creature with converted mana cost equal to the number of verse counters on him. You then put that creature onto the battlefield and shuffle your deck. So this card is very similar to Birthing Pod and Eldritch Evolution, in the sense that you search for and play increasingly powerful creatures, but Isan does not require that you sacrifice the creatures in order to do so. 
The first creatures you get are usually mana dorks. After that is utility creatures. Phyrexian Invoker shuts down specific targets. Scavenging Ooze will shut down Graveyard Shenanigans. And Gaia's Herald will shut off counter magic. You can also default to another mana ramp creature, like Steve, if you're still setting up. At 3 CMC, you're grabbing combo pieces and large ramp cards. Azusa Lost by Seeking is great to ramp. Manglehorn destroys one artifact and slows down the rest. Runic Armasaur is a card draw engine against specific commanders. Yisong is a toolbox deck. You put in what cards you feel would be good against your current meta. You play Yisong and play a progressively bigger threats as well as various creatures to also protect Yisong. Proliferate is a double-edged sword here. It allows you to skip steps and get bigger dudes out faster, but you can't go back and get cheaper utility creatures at lower converted mana costs. Yisong is an excellent commander that offers a fun build-around toolbox style deck in addition to allowing you to play out big teamy creatures later on. Yisong is a solid number three. At number two, we have Izuri, Renegade Leader. Izuri is a 2-2 Elf Warrior for one green green. He has pay a green, regenerate another target elf, and pay two green green green, five mana. Elf creatures you control gain plus three plus three and gain trample until end of turn. So he has a built-in overrun effect. Welcome to the North Pole where we don't make toys but mana. The point of his deck is simple. Make so many elves that you're mistaken for Santa, and then use his overrun ability to crush those who have mistaken you for a fat man in a bright red suit. Alorosaur Shepherd is probably your best turn one play, making every creature uncounterable and giving them a huge boost later in the game. From there, you start to play mana elves. A Wish Mystic, Landwar Elves, Findhorn Elves, Boreal Druid, all elves that can tap for one green mana and themselves cost one. Next you play elves that tap for even more mana. Priest of Titania, Elvish Archdruid, Wirewood Chandler, Gaia's Crater if you sell your house, and three Land War Elves stapled together. You get to play elves that just care about having a lot of Nightbeers. My Azuri list runs multiple lords. Elvish Archdruids, Draga Warcallers, Elvish Champion, Elvish Clancaller, Coat of Arms. Yes, that's a lord. The deck has many flex slots for whatever big dumb creatures you want to play. Try World Spine Worm. He deserves some love. Besides Azuri, you run the typical overrun effects, with Hoof being the typical closer. You run the best elves that you have, and it's a strong synergistic deck. I tend to not go for token strategy with Azuri, as there are too many good elves that I feel the token version is not what you want to be doing. Azuri allows you to play Commander Elves as a strong deck, with his abilities synergizing very well with his tribe. Izuri, Renegade Leaders number 2. At number 1, we have Selvala, Heart of the Wilds. 4, 1, green, green. You get a 2-3 Elf Scout, with whenever another creature enters the battlefield, its controller may draw a card if its power is greater than each other creature's power. You may also pay a green and tap Selvala, add X mana in any combination of colors to your mana pool, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. Selvala is a combo engine, being both a card draw engine as well as a mana engine. You start by turboing her out, Arbor Elf, Lanwar Elf, even Findhorn Elves. You need to get her out as soon as you can and you usually want to aim to draw her by turn 2. Once on board, you play a big creature, like Regal Force, and then go off. A neat combo involves Phyrexian Dreadnought, a 12-12 for 1 mana, whose enter the battlefield trigger will kill itself, but it's on board long enough to tap Salvala for 12 mana. The idea is to play cards that both untap Salvala and big creatures to draw more cards and continue the plays. Cards like Giant Growth and Invigorate net you additional mana, as the bigger the creatures you have, the more mana Salvala gives you. Best untappers include Quirion Ranger and Hyrax Tower Scout. The more combo-heavy version of the deck abuses Umbral Mantle. Umbral Mantle being a 3-mana artifact equipment with the equip cost of 0. The equipped creature has pay 3 and untap the creature to give the creature plus 2 plus 2. Effectively, this can go infinite with Selvala, as she can tap for more than 3 mana, and then untap herself, netting mana and making her larger. When it makes her larger, you can tap her for even more mana and continue the combo. 
You can use cards like Rishkar's Expertise, Momentous Fall, and Life's Legacy to draw a large amount of cards and find more combo pieces. Or you can use Genesis Wave and play out your entire deck. Savala is an archetype by herself and is amazing for Timmies who want to play big things and combo players looking to storm off. That's why Savala, Heart of the Wild, is number one.